Okay, Anson, thank you for letting me interview you. Can you please first just introduce yourself? And that can include your name, your major, and any applicable minors, your pre-professional track, as well as the current college you go to. Yeah, my name is Anson Huang. Uh, I'm, a, I'm now a set going to my second year at the University of Washington, currently studying political science and um, applying to a few more majors. And um, currently I'm looking at either pre-law or um, pursuing an MPA, depending on uh, where my life is at the moment and in terms of like what kind of experience I have at the moment. And um, I'll have to like think about if it will benefit me. Um, and yeah. That's, That's it. great to hear. Uh, so why did you decide to major in political science? Um, so like all my life, my academic journey has been guided by how I, how can I help others? And that's been like the route that's been kind of guiding my education. And although I took a lot of STEM classes and I took a lot of, I, I took a really diverse set of courses, especially when I was at Bellevue College. Um, since I'm a transfer student through a program called Running Start, um, I was able to like have a very diverse set of experiences in terms of academics. And um, what I found to be most interesting and most impactful in the long run for me is work in the policy uh, sector, just because um, growing up in, you know, low income, um, going through, uh, you know, public schooling in a very diverse school district has really shed light to how policy can be used to, um, you know, bring, bring bad realities to existence. And as much as I saw how bad policy can do communities a lot of harm, I also saw how good policy can change that and bring hope to a community. And that's what led me to wanting to learn more about politics and learning about how the government works. So hopefully that I can um, work in the government and policy um, industry just so I can create these good policies that can benefit people. And that's ultimately why I chose to follow this route so that I can um, use my education to help and benefit others. That sounds really amazing. Um, so do you have any advice for current high school students who are trying to pursue that same route? Because I know you worked on a couple of like campaigns and everything. Do you have any advice for students who want to go towards that political science route or are still um, in high school? Yeah, if you want to gain some experience, if you want a, the first foot in the door, there's, you know, there's campaigns happening every single year. There's elections every single year. And let me tell you, like, people who are running, the candidates, they need volunteers. They want volunteers. Like, they're actively trying to find volunteers. So if there's a candidate you're looking for or there's a candidate you're looking at, go and volunteer with them because more often than not, they want to, they need, they need, they need your help. Um, and they'll be glad to take you in as a volunteer. And through that, you can, you know, build your first connection with a potential future politician and as well as get your foot in the door. And like at the very core of government, at the very base of government, it's, can you talk to your constituents? Can you talk to the people in your community? And when you're campaigning, when you're knocking on doors, when you're speaking with people, that's like at the very that's the very first step of good policy. You know, listening to what people's concerns are, broadening your perspective, and you know, really listening to people because that's that's what government is for, the people. And you know, campaigning is a great way to get involved and you learn a lot of stuff, you know. You learn that you know, there's a max amount of money you can donate. You know, there's, you know, about filing deadlines. You learn how to, um, you know, add your candidates' contributions to the uh, PDC. And, you know, you learn a lot of stuff on the way. It's a really good hands-on education. Like, you can only learn so much in 
uh, you know, political science class, I think you would learn a lot more when you're actively on the field and engaged. Also, um, you know, look out for online webinars or um, anything that's happening in your community. Like uh, shortly after I graduated high school, um, I signed up for this training in Seattle with uh, APEX, the Asian Pacific American Institute for Congressional Studies. And what they did was they basically offer trainings across the country in like big cities, you know, Seattle, Minneapolis, uh, Las Vegas, I believe, uh, many more. And they basically train people how to run campaigns. And not only that, there's a lot of networking that you can do with the other, um, other people who sign up for the program. And some of them are even already elected officials. Like when I uh, participate in the program, um, Takashi Ono, who is a Hawaii uh, House of Represent State Representative, was also one of the attendees. So it's really cool that you get to not only be in a room of people aspiring to campaign or aspiring to enter the political field, you also get to be surrounded with people who are already elected. And, you know, that's, that opportunity is pretty specific to the AAPI community. Um, but, you know, there's plenty of uh, programs and trainings out there that, you know, just actively look for them because they're out there and uh, it'll definitely broaden your network. It'll broaden your knowledge. And it's just a really good opportunity overall. Like, just, it's, there's a lot out there. Thank you for sharing that little bit about it. That was really helpful for students who are pursuing that. Um, so what made you want to go to UW? And that can be like for the major itself or whatever you find applicable. Um, the main reason is I'd say probably like financially, it was, I think the best choice for me, just because like I said, I was a, I'm a transfer student from Novi College just because I did uh, the Running Star program my junior and senior year of high school. And that allowed me to get two years worth of um, credits as long as the, um, for like in-state Washington schools. So I was already looking at in-state and um, University of Washington was just the most appealing to me. Um, Totally just because, you know, I grew up in Washington and my sister went to UW and it's just been something that's been pushed my whole life. And while I did want to go to like, you know, big name out of, out of state schools, it was just like way too expensive. And I knew even if I got accepted, I probably wouldn't just because of the cost. And, um, you know, a big reason is the cost, you know, so that's kind of one of the biggest driving factors of uh, my decision. But, you know, UW's a great school. And, um, you know, I, I think, honestly, your education is really what you make of it. So even if you go to, no matter what school you go to, if you don't put in the constant effort and you don't, aren't intentional with what you're doing, then, you know, it's, it's you're going to get that exact result out of, out of it and you know there's a lot of opportunity no matter where you go it's really what you make of it that shapes your academic career yeah i 100 percent agree with that that is why i tell majority of like, my friends um how do you like uw what and concerns like to your major do you think it has a really good political science department um so like this is my first year and i I just signed up for the major probably a few months ago, so I haven't had direct contact with the, um, what are they called again? Advisors. So, but like the department overall, um, all my professors so far have been amazing. They're super smart. And, um, you know, I love the department so far. Um, what I wish that you did more of was, um, I guess, more social and networking opportunities in the political science department because um, it almost seems like we're on our own. Um, so that's one um, 
area that I think could be improved. And again, there's a lot of like political RSOs. There's the, um, you know, there's the Bernie Sanders RSO. There's the uh, UW uh, Dem Student Democrats. I forgot what they're called. And there's also a CUW Senate you can get involved with. Um, so there's still a lot of outlets, but I guess I just wish there was more policy, uh, major driven um, social events and whatnot, just to meet fellow members of your cohort. That'd be pretty fun. But other than that, the professors are super smart, super bright, and you know they know what they're doing. Um, but uh, actually, one of my friends who has some experience speaking with one of the advisors, not going to name them, um, they didn't have a very good experience. Um, but, you know, that's his story. Um, you know, of course, that doesn't apply to, you know, all the advisors or the department as a whole. But, you know, as much as there are amazing professors, great advisors, you know, there's just like with any other department, there's always going to be that, you know, one person who's you usually shy away from. Yeah, not every department is perfect, but I would say that like political science department is like pretty good at the moment. Um, so you did mention that you went to Bellevue College through Running Start. Personally, would you recommend students do Running Start if their state has that program? Um, because I have heard that before, like Running Start, while it is a really great program, it can deteriorate from like your high school experience and things like that. Yeah, definitely. The high school experience is, you know, pretty important, but I'd say if you're involved, if you, I'd say if you already, if you're involved with your high school, you're going to stay involved with your high school. You know, um, the only thing that I think Running Star will take away from is getting to see everyone in your class, everyone in your school every day, which is like, you know, a huge, it's a small thing, but it's a huge part of the high school experience. You know, the 7.30 to 2 or 3 p.m. schedule, depending on, you know, where you're from, that was scheduled for me. You're missing out on that, but in terms of other extracurricular, extracurriculars, like after school sports or clubs, you're you're going to make it, you know. You're going to still be involved in that sense. Like um, when I did Running Start, I was still involved in my school through a club I was in. It's called the Renton Ambassadors, which is a community service-based club that kind of um, brought the Renton community, the, where uh, the city where I went to school in, together with the Renton High School community. Because Renton High School used to, well, they still do get a pretty bad rep from the community. And um, that was one of our goals to show the community that, hey, Renton High School is not even bad. And um, another extracurricular I did was track and cross country. And this allowed me to stay connected with my friends at Renton and as well as meet new incoming like freshmen, uh, underclassmen, sophomores, even juniors. And I'd say if you want to be involved and if you're already involved, you're going to stay involved. Um, so I wouldn't say you definitely miss out on some high school experiences just because you're not at the high school, you know, but there's still so much opportunity to stay involved. And, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Um, and in addition, um, you know, depending on the, on the question of if I would recommend Running Start or a similar dual enrollment uh, kind of program, I'd say you just got to like look at what your goals are and where you want to go to college as well as um, come prepared. Like a lot of people say Running Start is like the easy way out just because it's not IB or AP, which is more rigorous. But doing Running Start comes with its own set of challenges. You're, you're really left to yourself. So you want to make sure you know what you're doing and you need to know that you're 
that help is available if you need it. And you really got to not be afraid to reach out to people when you need help because, you know, like I said, you're on your own. And as much as, you know, freedom is good and you can choose whatever classes you want and whatnot, you can also choose whatever classes you want. And I don't know, some people aren't always ready for that uh, responsibility, I'd say. And it definitely takes a lot more self-reflection and consideration every single quarter when you're taking your classes because you want to make sure you're taking classes you need you need for the future. And um, but definitely I'd say these dual enrollment programs are really good if um, you don't know what you're doing with uh, in the future as in like what major you want to pursue, what career you want to pursue. But it's also very good if you do know, just because you can knock a lot of prerequisites out. And if you don't know what you're doing, then, I mean, that's okay, too, because you can explore different classes and, you know, your school district will pay for it. You know, that's amazing. It's free college for two years. You know, it's, it's really amazing. You're, it's a really good opportunity for you to, um, you know, get out there, explore different fields and, you know. And if you already know what you're doing, you can get a bunch of prereqs done that you won't have to take later on, which, you know, it improves your GPA. If that's one thing. And you don't have to take it later on. You can just take it now and it'll, you know, set you ahead. And overall, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty good experience. But again, you have to really consider and do some self-reflecting on, you know, what matters to you. And yeah. All right, thank you for sharing that little bit about letting start with us. And now we're gonna switch a little bit towards like you does specifically. So like currently, what extracurriculars are you participating in, and what will you participate in the future? Um, can give me my to reply to this. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, I think that's the person. All right, sorry, what was the question? What extracurriculars are you currently participating in or what um, extracurriculars are you going to be participating in in the future? Um, yeah, right now I am part of ASUW Senate and I literally just joined um, in February just because uh, there was a lot of time conflicts I had during my fall quarter because I had an internship and um, you know, that made things pretty difficult, just transitioning to UW while working internship. And I just didn't have the bandwidth to uh, add any more extracurriculars. Another with extracurriculars is when people who are really involved in high school and um, they come into university, at least for me, I was always thinking, all right, now my plate is empty. I need to fill up again. I was really just trying, fall court, I was really just trying to like seek out RSOs and uh, seek out what groups and clubs I can join just to fill my plate back up just because I'm used to having uh, a lot of things on my plate and I like being active. I like feeling that I'm part of the community. Um, it ended up going to a point where I just applied for too many things that, and I just couldn't do it. And I think that's an important thing to think about and an important point to realize. You don't have to, you know, constantly pursue your next, your next thing, your next club, your next uh, extracurricular. Like you can be fine with just doing nothing and that's okay. You know, that's something that I, was, I had to, um, that I realized early on. And, but I didn't, I, I didn't like, I couldn't take that in until a lot later because I was just putting a lot of pressure on myself to join everything I can just to get involved. But, you know, at some point you got to realize you don't, you don't have to join everything just for the sake of getting involved. You just have to get involved with the things that you really care about. And um, for me, that was, you know, SUW Senate. And 
after my internship was over and the opportunity came up during around February and I took this opportunity and you know I joined Senate and it was really it was it was a it was a difficult transition for sure just because the legislative session already began and everyone kind of knows each other and I was just kind of like thrown into it um so that made the transition a little bit difficult um especially after covid when all the legis- uh, all the senate meetings tra- uh moved to online uh that was a difficult transition for everybody um so ultimately I wasn't able to do everything I wanted to do in senate but I'm excited for next year um just because I got elected uh the chair of the committee for resolution follow up and um you know, I'm excited to do more next year and be more involved. That's great. Congratulations on your new position in the Senate. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so um, in regards to UW, um, how would you say that academic support is? At UW, uh, like I said earlier, you got to be the one to, you know, reach out if you need help. Um, you know, there's 40,000 plus students. Don't call me on that. I think that I think that's about right, though. Around forty thousand plus students, and you're not the only student out there. So your professors and advisors, they're not gonna know if you're if you're, you're struggling if you don't let them know. So I say definitely let them know if you are struggling with anything. But overall, the university is pretty lenient, and they understand if something's up. Um, most professors are pretty nice that way. Um, especially during these last few months when, you know, I'm not sure if I can get political, but in terms of like the uh, Black Lives Matter. You can get political. Okay, I'll I'll be as neutral as possible. In terms of like the Black Lives Matter movement with all the injustices that's happening in our society right now and COVID, uh, the administration was pretty lenient with the grading, especially to uh, the disproportionately affected black community at UW and you know they could always do more but you know that's a that's a long-term struggle and you know for example they provided well most department this depends on like the department but a lot of apartment departments provided uh, accommodations whether that be waiving the final exam making it optional or um I know at Foster and the Foster School of Business, I think they raised the um, median grade to 3.5. Um, just like little things like the this that you know accommodates for whatever's going on. So I'd say the academic support is pretty good, and you know there's a lot of uh, you know after school uh, tutoring sessions and um, if you're a mi- ethnic minority. There's also OMAD, which helps you a lot in terms of tutoring and getting you on track. Um, for other courses, there's the uh, late night clue studying, which runs you know pretty late at night. I think it ends at 11, when it was on campus at least. And it's basically a late night tutoring session, which is uh, very supportive, very helpful. And you know, there's a lot of resources out there. Again, um, the university will let you know what's available but at the same time you know be active be proactive you know it's can't really they're not going to spoon feed you all the way through you know you got to be active in um going after these opportunities for uh, academic support they're like they're definitely out there you just got to be able to you know find it yourself sometime No, yeah, for sure. I think that comes with like every university and reaching out to professors or advisors. So that makes complete sense. So I know that you lived in the dorms your freshman year. Um, How is that experience for you? And would you recommend living in the dorms your first year? Yeah, uh, actually, you know, that's a hard question because to the upcoming freshmen who are coming to the university for the 2020-2021 school year, I don't I don't think I would recommend coming to the dorm just because a lot of classes are now either online or hybrid. So I wouldn't say it's really for one, I don't know if it's worth it. And 
um, two. It's it's you know it's kind of dangerous. You know, at UW, over one hundred students on Greek Road just tested positive for COVID, and in a university setting, when like I said, forty thousand plus students, that's a lot of people in a small concentrated area. So for next year specifically in this um, you know this extraordinary case. I wouldn't say I recommend it, but in other cases, I, I would definitely recommend it just because, you know, you meet a lot of people and it's a really good event, uh, not event, really good opportunity to, um, you know, get acquainted to university life. Um, and, you know, it's, yeah, I mean, that's it. It's just a really good experience to <laughs> no, yeah. experience. Um, did you live with strangers or did you live with somebody you knew in high school and you know or like what would you recommend for students if they were to live in, in the dorms yeah so i only have one year of experience with dorms i don't know what it's like to live with strangers um because i was dorming with some high school friends and you know that was pretty fun we already knew each other and um that definitely made the transition a bit easier just because i know everyone and i'm not really afraid to like call them out on things that bother me like you know there's definitely going to be pet peeves as you um you know go through the living experience with your friends so you know it's cool to live with friends but even if you move in with complete strangers that's okay too because they're probably pretty cool people like i know a lot of people who just moved in with completely random people they had a they had a blast so i mean i don't think it's a big issue either way it's really cool to live with some friends though so i mean if you can live with your friends live with your friends but even if you dorm with strangers that's really really cool too and i know you can you know attest to that as well trinity um but overall it's it's really it's a really good experience overall just because you can really meet a bunch of people um it's a really friendly environment especially in the first few months of school because everyone is just trying to meet everyone and everyone's pretty social um like i remember around the, like the first week of school i was literally just walking around at night and seeing which doors are open and literally just saying hi to everybody and you know it's a it sounds really weird but people do that you know people do that to us and it was just a really nice environment it was really it was really welcoming and um you know it's it's a, it's a great time and sometimes people would just and it's crazy. It's a really unique opportunity you can't really experience anywhere else. Like sometimes people would, you know, come over at 4 a.m., you know, sometimes just to eat rice and shit. And, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a really fun. It sounds really fun. Yeah. Um, so, you, so, yeah, I think I can say for both of us that dorm life is pretty interesting and that it is quite an experience. So now we're going to transition a little bit towards like the college application process in general. So personally, looking back at it, how did you feel about your college application process? Um, I'd say my personal statement was pretty garbage looking back at it and reading it. Um, my diversity essay was pretty good. I, def I definitely, I'd say, yeah, the personal statement is definitely the hardest part. Um, Everything else is just repetitive and monotonous. I'd say get it done early so you can focus on your overall personal statement and, you know, more important stuff. Um, I remember I spent like six hours just setting up my application and putting in every little thing. Uh, like I had to put in, like when you apply for college, at least on, I forgot which uh, application, or what, coalition application. Yeah. They make you input every single class you took for high school credit and even college credit if applicable. And that takes a lot of time. And not only that, but there's other portions which take a lot of time. So I'd say get your get like the logistics of your application done early on, maybe August, maybe earlier. And, you know, just add classes as you take them. And update your grades as you get them 
and you know get the monotonous stuff done and then focus on your essay early on you don't have to have everything down but i think a good timeline would be depending on when your application is due i'd say like two months before your application is due have like a really trashy rough draft that you randomly just you know typed in one sitting just rambled on done and then over the course of the next month just you know edit it make it nice and then if you need to like throw it out throw it out go ahead but definitely i'd say three weeks three weeks before your application is due really hone in on your essay and you know i'd say take like when but as you're editing the essay, take a few days in between. Don't like look at it every day, because if you do that, it's gonna make your essay is gonna make more and more sense to you. But sometimes it doesn't make sense, and you're just like um, kind of more acclimated to your essay just because you're the one who wrote it and you know what you're talking about. But sometimes if you take a few days break, you and you reread it you really start seeing the weaknesses and flaws in your essay. So um, definitely don't look at it every day, take some breaks in between, because then that's gonna clear your mind and your essay's gonna be that much better. Um, but overall, you know, it's, it's not that bad, it just takes a long time. And uh, writing your personal statement can be fun, but it also can be frustrating. I know for a lot of people, um, some days you can't, you don't really know what to write. You really just got to wait for that opportune moment to hit you. And sometimes you write your entire personal statement in one sitting. Like it, it works that way sometimes. So whenever you feel even that like slightest bit of inspiration, really just go ham on your essay because you might not be able to get that spark later on. Yeah, yeah that makes sense to make, to make, to take breaks and to also like sometimes you just have those like moments of inspiration yeah um looking back do you, do you, were you familiar with the entire process or did you have help from your family or like your counselors at your high school uh, i was not familiar but um just because you know first generation and i know i mean i think for most people they're not too familiar with the process um but the common app the coalition app it's it's pretty straightforward with what you have to do. Like I said, it's pretty monotonous, busy work. Like it just tells you what you need and then you just type it in. Um, so the, uh, the application process isn't too uh, mind numbing. Um, so yeah, I guess that's my answer. <laughs> okay, yeah, sorry. I forgot that you were first gen for a little bit. So sorry about that question. Um, when it came to your college application process, how long did it take you? Like, and that includes research for colleges as well as like submitting financial aid and things like that. Oh yeah, just it's hard to say. It it all depends on how many colleges you're applying to. Um, some colleges require additional financial aid uh, forms. Um, I forgot what they're called, especially like uh, Ivy Leagues or Stanford, um, they require you to submit this additional financial aid form for proof that your family makes a certain amount of income. And just because they offer, like, they have amazing uh, financial aid programs and they just want, like, they want, they just want to make sure people are honest. Um, but financial aid, when you're filling out FAFSA, the first time you fill it out, it takes a while. There's a lot of, you know, legal terminology. You got to type in your address five million times and whatnot. But, um, you know, with Google autofill, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, and then it's it's not always fun when you're, uh, when your parents are immigrants. They don't really speak English because then you have to make a FAFSA account for them. and then because at the end of it, you gotta, um, your parents have to uh, electronically sign that everything is accurate. And to do that, they need to have like a FAFSA type account too. And 
because my parents don't really know how to do that stuff. I had to do that for them. That took a little while. And um, I don't remember how long it takes, but I would say give yourself like at least two hours. Um, do it in one sitting, preferably. And yeah, in terms of researching colleges, it depends on everyone, obviously, just because I don't know. People are interested in, you know, different colleges. People are interested in different programs. So it depends on the person, I'd say. For me, like I said, I was really just eyeing at UW just because of the, um, just because due to financials. I also applied to like two other schools. They were like, you know, far reaching schools. Obviously, I didn't get accepted, sadly. But, you know, didn't have to do much research for those schools. Um, but yeah, overall the process, you know, just do a little bit every day and it it won't feel won't feel like a thing at all. No, oh, yeah. I think time management is a crucial part of the college application process. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, it is. Um, I know you mentioned about your personal statement how you thought it was pretty bad. Um, but looking back at it, would you have changed anything about your college application process? Um Hmm, that's a good question. I'd say research, do a little bit more research about uh, the school's specific programs because at UW, it's pretty competitive to get into certain majors and um, certain programs. So what I would have done, actually, I probably wouldn't have done this just because, so like right now I'm, planning to apply to computer science and if I knew that I liked computer science back then if I somehow took a class or I was somehow introduced to computer science through something or some class or someone I probably would have applied for computer science as my first choice because when you're applying for a college there's a let me get my charter real quick you can like rank which program you want to get into by like through a scale of like one to five or something. And for UW, um, there's a lot of programs that are direct admission, which means your chances of getting in are uh, way higher if you apply to it through your application by ranking as your first choice. So I guess if I knew what program I wanted to get into and it was a competitive program, but there was this other program that I was interested in, but it's open. I would have I would apply to the program that's harder to get into as my first choice when I was uh, when I would be applying to the college through the application process just because your chance of getting in that program are higher and if you're interested in another program well it's open so you don't have to worry about really getting in so that's that's a, that's one thing I would change about the process and. Um, another thing is, you know, personal statement, I wish I had worked on it more. Like I spent a lot of time on it, but I kind of wish I had talked about another topic or was better at communicating that topic. No, yeah, I think the whole major thing makes sense, especially since you're trying to do comp sci. So my last question for you, and you kind of mentioned it throughout the interview. so. If you feel like you're repeating yourself, you don't have to mention it. Or if you want to repeat, it's totally fine. But if you if you could give advice to high school students, what would it be? And that can be about college life in general, or about the college application process, whatever you think is most applicable and important. Um, super cliche, but it's college. Have fun. Um, you're college you go to the your college um your college doesn't define you your education doesn't define where you're going to be it doesn't determine it it's all on you to have to make the most of your college experience and you know it's like i said earlier the the burden's all on you to make your college experience good or make it bad. And, you know, you could go to a top tier university, but, you know, do nothing but school. 
and you know you lose out on a lot of experiences that way i'd say when you're in college just actively seek out what um, opportunities that you're interested in um, take those internship take those risks um, enjoy your life here you know meet other people talk with people form study groups have a good time play frisbee in the field i don't know but just have fun with college. It's a, it's a really good experience. And, um, you know, for some people, you might not, some people don't probably don't even go to college for the education. But, you know, overall, just have a good time in college, you know, live in the present. And, you know, if you don't get into a certain program, don't even worry about it. Except if it's like pre med or you know, engineering, that would suck. But, you know, know that there's, <laughs> now know that there's always other options out there and know that, okay, this is from a dean of a pretty competitive, apart, very competitive department actually at UW. It doesn't matter, like, if you have a certain career goal, people are, employers are caring less and less about what major you have or if you even have a college education, they care more about experience. And a lot of the time, a degree is um, validates your experience, and it's a good to get in. But you know, if you're really passionate about something, actively, if it's something you can learn on your own, learn it on your own. And um, don't stress too much about, you know, what your major is, what your what you're doing with your life. No one really knows what they're doing. And, you know, just focus on living in the present and doing what you can. And you will succeed. Okay, that's great advice. Thank you for letting me interview you, Winston. Yes, you're welcome.